Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crack, it's crack, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. I designed and made this lamp off camera, but in this video, I'm going to make another one to match it and I'll show you how I do it. I originally made a similar light a year or so ago. That one was a longer strip light and that one was purely experimental. I worked it out as I went along. I learned from it and because of that, this light went a lot smoother. I'll start with the base and first I need to prepare some camphor laurel and glue a few pieces to turn on the lathe. I'm flattening one face so I can square it up on the table saw, riding that against the fence. Now I'll prepare a couple more pieces and they're for the foot of the base. I've taken the dimensions from the first lamp so it should be easy enough to replicate it or at least get close to it anyway. First I'm just turning it round and taking some material away. I'm not going down to the final shape and dimensions just yet.
The base is just about finished and now I'll start working on the shade and for that I need to make some wood shavings as they're thin enough that the light still shines through. That's not going to work but it did work great on my face and I reckon I look 10 years younger. I'll just take a moment to thank Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring today's video. Dollar Shave Club has you covered for all your grooming needs, shower, oral care, deodorants, and most importantly, shaving. They sent me their ultimate shave starter set with a weighty executive handle and blades, a one ounce tube of Dr. Carver's prep scrub to exfoliate the dead skin cells, a one ounce tube of shave butter, which I really liked as you can see where you're shaving, and a one ounce tube of post-shave dew. It's been a while since I last shaved and I usually get a shaving rash, but none of that with the Dollar Shave Club products. Visit dollarshaveclub.com forward slash past makes to get the ultimate shave start set for only $5 and finish off your grooming routine by adding one of their other high quality products. After that, the restock box ships full size products at the regular price. And thanks again to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring the video. Now I'll get back to making those wood shavings. To get a continuous shaving, the plane needs to be super sharp. There's a bit of tear out at the start where the grain runs in the opposite direction, but there's still plenty there to work with. When I made my original light from plane shavings, I made a panel of them and I peeled it away from the work surface. As I said earlier, that project was an experimental one and I realized an easier way would be to stick the shavings directly onto a piece of plexiglass. Before I start sticking shavings to the glass, I'll give it a good clean with methylated spirits. To stick the shavings down, I'm pasting them with a water-based varnish. I'm overlapping the ends in each row by around three millimeters or an eighth of an inch and I'm also making sure to stagger the joints. The strips could be carefully laid out and butt jointed but I really like how they overlap. I kept building up the coat, so I think it had about five, if I remember correctly. There were a few bubbles in the veneers, but I reckon it still looks pretty good and it was easy to do. I only drilled the middle hole on the opposite end and then I drilled the rest of them as I went along.
Now I need to prepare some more camphor laurel and that's for the rims. I've just trimmed the other ends on the table saw just to make it easier to clamp while gluing. These markings are for supports that I'll fit later on, but they're easier to lay out now. This circle is for the shade to fit into. I'll make deeper circles either side, then slice out the rim on the table saw. I'm making a rim either side of the workpiece, so I keep flipping it over while I've got the router set up in that certain position. Now I need to start working on how the shade fits onto the base and I've got this old lamp, I'm not even sure where it came from but I'm going to reuse the fittings off that and the first thing I need to do is make a bracket that fits on there and then that will hold the shade up and onto the base. I think these rods are fiberglass. I can't remember where I salvaged them from, but they're perfect for supporting the shade. And an alternative would be just to use dowels.
I bought black silicon by mistake. Clear would have been much better. It just means that I have to be much, much neater now using the black. Before I glue the supports in, I need to deal with the rim. Because it's out of a solid piece of wood, it's going to change shape and it'll end up being oval. So to help prevent that, I'm going to put a Kumiko panel in there and that will give it just a little bit more structure. These Kumiko strips are left over from a past project and I tried something different that I haven't tried before. I finished them with water-based varnish before using them. I'll glue the Kumiko panel in place with epoxy and I thought it wouldn't hurt to take out a small piece with a V chisel just to give the epoxy something to grab onto. That was a bit fiddly, but not too difficult. It was actually more difficult trying to get a good shot of it before the five minute epoxy set. I'm very happy with how they turned out. I really enjoyed the project too. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.